Welcome back to the number one channel in exploring podiatry. My name is Yona. I'm a third year podiatric medical student at CSPM. And today I have a really special topic for you guys. And we're gonna be talking about the different things to consider when choosing a podiatric medical school. As well as in this video, I'm gonna be talking about some of the things that influenced my decision in choosing CSPM. For the first point I want you guys to consider is location. For me, I wanted to stay in the California area. I was lucky enough to have two podiatric medical schools to consider, which were Western and CSPM. And the reason why I didn't want to leave California was because I have my friends and family here to support me as I go through medical school, as well as I didn't want to go through all that struggle of driving a car to a different state and moving all my stuff out. So I was happy just to choose between two schools in California. But for some of you, you guys probably live in a state where there is no podiatric medical schools. So you're going to be forced to consider schools in different states, you know? It's up to you to try to visit those schools, see how it's like, see how it feels, if it's suitable to your needs. Talk to family and friends and see what they think. These are some of the things you should consider when thinking about choosing a school and a location. Second point I want you guys to consider is cost of living. And look, medical school is not cheap. You guys might take out loans and having this extra financial burden of paying for a high cost of living is something that you don't wanna deal with and something that you don't wanna add an extra stress on. Consider that because some areas, their studios probably range up to $1,000. And for me, living in the Bay Area, studios up here cost for anywhere from $2,000 to $3,000, and living with a person could cost $1,200 to $1,700. Cost of living in the Bay Area is really, really expensive, and are you willing to shell out a lot of money for cost of living when you're already struggling with financial aid? That's something you really need to consider, and uh, that's something that you just have to sit down, talk to your family about, create yourself a budget sheet, and really go through the logistics of making sure it's something feasible for you going through your four years of medical school. The third thing I want you guys to consider is the surrounding area. And I mean two things by this. First thing, is it in a rural area or is it an urban city life area? And maybe you prefer one or the other. And second thing is safety. I really prioritize safety. And ironically, I chose an area such as Oakland and Oakland doesn't have the greatest reputation of being safe. However, the campus itself is very safe because there's security guards everywhere, making sure they're always checking your ID badges as you enter a building. No unauthorized students are entering the building or different people are entering the building. That's a nice thing to have in place. But for you, maybe you really just need a 100% safe free area and it's up to you to do that research and make sure you talk to your parents about that as well to see how comfortable they are with you living in an area that is mildly safe or very safe. That's really important to consider. The fourth point I want you guys to consider is class sizes. Do you like really small class sizes or do you like really big class sizes? In CSPM, we have smaller class sizes and it goes up to 50 students per class. And I really like that because A, you can have a more intimate relationship with your teacher and B, I feel like I can get all my questions answered and I feel like I'm really learning side by side as a teacher is teaching. And for some of you, maybe a bigger class size is best because you can have more of a support system, more friends to make. Those are little things you should consider. For some programs I know in Western, their DPM students are with DO students. It's up to you to make sure you talk to students and faculty to see what their opinions are like on having DO and DPM students mixed in, if there's any issue with that, are the classes different? So things to consider when looking at different class sizes. The fifth thing would be things to do in your surrounding area and different activities and events that you can participate in. For me, I'm really lucky enough to live in the Bay Area and there are a million restaurants that you're surrounded by. And my roommate and I, after we finish a big exam, we like to go to a different restaurant and try out different food. So on the weekends, I love going out and dancing, you know, and there is a great nightlife in San Francisco and Oakland area. So that's really nice to have. And this is my way of de-stressing. I do have a social life standard and I'm glad that the Bay Area fits that social life standard of mine. 
and it's up to you to make sure you do your research or if you could visit the school, make sure you look at the surrounding area to see what things there are to do. The sixth point I would like you guys to consider is public transportation. And for some of you, you probably don't have a car and you really rely on public transportation. It's up to you to do your research in the surrounding area to make sure that they have a good system in place suitable for your needs. In particular, in the Bay Area, we have a really good bus transportation system and we also have this thing called the BART. And the BART is an underground train system that takes you to different parts of Oakland and to different parts of San Francisco. And there are some students who actually live in San Francisco and take this BART train in the morning, go straight to a BART stop in Oakland and just either walk or bike from that BART stop to our school. It's really convenient for a lot of these students because A, it's really affordable and B, it really does allow you to be more flexible with where you live. Make sure you do your research and making sure that there's a really good transportation system around your area. The seventh point I want you guys to consider would be residencies. And why am I talking about residencies? Well, when you're going to a school in a particular state, they're gonna have different residency programs in that state. And you probably want to go to that residency program. You're thinking to yourself, well, it would probably be best for me to go to that school because I'm gonna have really easy accessibility to that residency program to visit, to look at, to talk to the doctors. And maybe some of your clinical rotations go through that hospital and you're gonna be able to talk to those people and get to know that residency better without having to deal with all the traveling, with, with all the moving and this might be something that will really help you make your decision after four years of medical school. So this is a little caveat that you should consider. The eight point that I want you guys to consider would be this so-called X factor. Each school has something unique about them that makes them a big selling point to students. I can only speak for CSPM. I chose CSPM and Diksha chose CSPM because we both really liked the idea of early clinical rotations. And we start our clinical rotations actually at the end of our first year in the summer going into our second year. And having all that clinical exposure right off the bat when you're taking some of your classes is really, really nice. It goes hand in hand with your podiatric medicine classes, with your podiatric surgery classes, and it helps facilitate your learning as you're going through these classes. And I really like that. And again, you have to really talk to the faculty, talk to the students and see what was the big X factor about that school that makes them really stand out. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video because I really enjoyed making this video with all the factors that I considered when choosing a podiatric medical school. Obviously there's probably more factors to consider and if you guys know of any more, please comment down below so other students can see other factors to consider. Please subscribe and hit the bell notification for our channel because we'll be posting future videos in order to help you through your podiatric medical journey. Also follow us on Instagram at the DPM journey and shoot us an email at the DPM journey at gmail.com. As always, I hope you guys have an amazing day. Pod Squad signing out. Take care guys. Yeah.